I think the only way for the animal hospital to be influential is to show the public how much we do care, how much we go the extra mile to accommodate. I think that has inspired people to want to be a part of the Raps family with their own pets. You know what, the donations at the thrift store have gone up considerably. I've had people from all over North America send me stuff in the mail. I have had jewelry stamps, I've had money come from all over North America because they saw some pets and pickers. And our general quality of donations has gone up because now people know what we do. So from the thrift store point of view, Pets and Pickers is like the world's best advertising for doing the right thing. I'm Peter McCulley. The Raps Animal Hospital in Richmond is very unique. It is a full service, not-for-profit veterinary clinic operated by the Regional Animal Protection Society the fund's medical services through donations, and its thrift store. The hospital and thrift stores are now the focus of a TV show, Pets and Pickers. We'll meet Allison Stanley, a vet technician, and Karen Camachi, the thrift store manager, on this edition of Today in BC. Thanks for joining me today, Allison and Karen. Thank you for having us. Hello. Allison, let's start with you. Did you always want to work with animals? And when did you join the staff at the Raps Animal Hospital? I'd say my whole life I've been interested in animals, fascinated by them, very drawn to them. I didn't start off as a technician. I started off in the hairdressing industry after high school and did that since 2002. And in about 2014, I got the opportunity to try something else and start off as a vet assistant in Richmond. It just snowballed for me. The ball just kept rolling. I kept learning and kept growing and having new responsibilities. And so I'd say I was always meant to do this, but I'm really in the zone right now where I'm at with my career. I joined RAPS about two years ago now. That sounds excellent. And it beats standing on your feet for nine hours cutting hair, right? For sure. My patients don't talk back to me. They bite, but they don't talk back. (laughs) (laughs) Karen, you're the manager of the thrift stores. How did that come about? I've been with RAPS for about 15 years. Uh, I started out scooping cat litter at the cat sanctuary. I was a florist for a long time, and I did their flowers for a great big gala they had. And the CEO saw that I could manage people in doing that. And so he was opening up a new thrift store, and he talked me into that. And I've been doing that ever since. So, Allison, the RAPS Animal Hospital is a not-for-profit veterinary facility now. How does that work? Correct. Now, what that means, not-for-profit, when people think not-for-profit, they think we're a very low-cost veterinary clinic. That's not the case. We are average costs. But what happens to those funds, instead of them being dispersed into employees' pockets, they are dispersed into the cat sanctuary, into the medical care for those cats. They go back into the community. It's really a little circle of our private network here. That's how we operate. You mentioned the cat sanctuary. You also operate an adoption center. We do operate an adoption center. So we have strays or surrenders or animals that are pregnant that come in, more so cats than dogs. What happens is we do the medical examination, make sure they're fit for adoption. And then the funds that are raised from the adoptions, again, go back into the organization. And am I correct that pet owners that are having a tough time with medical bills can apply for financial assistance? Yes, any owner can apply for financial assistance. We have a subsidy program and we also have payment plan programs that are at 0% interest, flexible term. And that's something that not even credit card companies offer, other businesses offer 0% interest. We're doing a great job as far as being able to provide people that are in need with those kinds of services. Karen, on the TV show Pets and Pickers, I noticed a number of large plywood boxes that you and the staff are going through to stock the store. And it seems like it's a surprise when you open the container. How do those items come to you? Those storage lockers are abandoned or they didn't pay their storage locker fees. So when that happens, usually they go to auction. But we've had some very supportive storage folk donate a ton of storage locker bins. And they are surprised. We have no idea what's in them. They just get dropped at the store or at the cat sanctuary. And we just open it up and hope there's lots of money to support our animals in need. Because on the various Picker TV shows that we've all watched over the years, the pickers go out and, and find the items they want. But you've got items coming to you. Are you surprised when you see what people donate 
not from the storage lockers, but maybe just walk in with a couple of boxes in the back of their car or truck? Totally. There isn't a day that goes by that I am not surprised by what comes through our door, either by a donation or by a storage locker. It is absolutely stunning what people will do for the sake of an animal's life. I've had some weird stuff. I've actually had people's ashes. I've had statues that are nine feet high come out of a storage locker. I've had beautiful jewelry and I've had weird stuff. I've had body parts from acupuncture store. I've had lots of lots and lots of guns that we've had to return into the RCMP. You wouldn't believe it. And of course, I've had some very expensive things come by this thrift store. Very expensive, high-end purses, clothes, shoes, that sort of thing. Allison, folks have been known to keep some pretty non-traditional pets in their houses. Have any of those shown up at the vet clinic? Yeah, so a couple of different times. We, we don't get a lot of them, but two that stick out in mind are a monitor lizard, which I believe are illegal. However, the poor little guy wasn't doing good, so my previous doctor saw that one. And the other one that was in actually recently was a serval cat, and they're quite exotic. They're mixed between an exotic cat and a house cat. So they're about 50 pounds, that kind of thing. They can be very tame, but they can also be very stoic and leave me alone. <laughs> Pets always uh, have a habit of eating things they shouldn't, especially uh, puppies and kittens. Have you had your share of weird discoveries like Karen? We get one of our specialists come in to do an endoscopy from time to time, and the stuff he pulls out, I've seen pepperoni sausages, I've seen roast chickens, I've seen tennis balls, fur, you name it. There is no limit as to what a dog can eat. <laughs> Karen, tell me about the volunteers that help you with the items on the television show that eventually find their way to the thrift stores. When I saw Marty there, there was something very familiar about him. We only get to do what we do because of volunteers, because it drops how much it costs us to do what we're doing. And I've known Marty for a decade, and he is an interesting person and a well-known person in his own right. He was the road manager for the Guess Who and a few other cool people. So he's a very cool guy with lots of knowledge. I have a fellow named Val that's wonderful. Amy on Pets and Pickers, she's awesome. Margaret Leakley, she's awesome. If it wasn't for those people, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. All of them are specialists at different things, which is really amazing that everybody's got their own special niche and they're not all the same. When Today in BC continues, Allison Stanley and Karen Kamachi tell us about the team of caregivers at Raps and a story of returning art to a family that thought it was lost forever. Get fast access to breaking news by signing up now to Black Press Media's free newsletters and stay informed with all the latest news delivered directly to your inbox. You'll have access on any device, so you never have to miss out again on the information you need to know. Hey, it's the Moj, Bob Arjanovich, inviting you to join me on the Moj on Sports podcast, featuring interviews with well-known athletes and celebs. How did they get to where they are? Who influenced them? What obstacles did they overcome? Get the inside story and look behind the scenes at what makes these successful people tick. We can't list them all here, so visit and listen into the Mo John Sports Podcast on todayinbc.com. You'll also find our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, iHeart, YouTube, and Google Podcasts, as well as mojohnsports.com. I'm Peter McCulley. Today in BC is a Black Press Media Podcast. Watching Pets and Pickers, there's always a story or two that pull at your heartstrings, whether it's the animals, their owners, or the team of veterinarians who care for them. And occasionally, a really great story comes out of the thrift store as well. Karen, tell me about finding a large amount of art from woodcarver Victor Reese. Victor Reese had a storage locker that was abandoned. The reason why it was abandoned, it turns out, was he passed away. That's why he didn't collect his stuff. And it was at the back of the cat sanctuary, and it, the bin had actually been hit by a forklift and so it was quite damaged the fact that we got victor's stuff out is amazing that nobody was hurt and that nothing was damaged when it was hit but returning it back to his family was probably the most moving thing i've ever done in my life it was returning the family stuff because the family had nothing from him they didn't have any of his carvings they didn't have their family photos they didn't have their baby photos they had nothing 
So to give it back to Skeena was probably one of the best things I've ever done in my professional life, for sure. Yeah, on the television show, his daughter came into the store and saw a display that you had set up. When she came, she thought she was going to get a shoebox, and instead she got an 8x8 eight eight cube. We overwhelmed her with the amount of stuff we had. What you see in Pets and Pickers is 15 minutes, but it actually took us six hours to go through all of her stuff. I think that particular episode even touched Allison on a personal level as she sent me a message. And for me, it was a way of the thrift stores connecting with the vet hospital because often we don't. And it, it made me feel like we're one great big family that impacts each other. I'm grateful that the vet hospital does its thing. I'm grateful the thrift store does its thing. And I'm grateful we help each other. The question I have for both of you, actually, is the show is unscripted, and that means there's production people and camera people and sound people wandering around following you here and there, and that must be pretty strange for the first while. It sure is strange. It's not anything that I ever thought in my 60 years on this planet I'd be doing. Thank God our crew is really great. They really flow with it. At the thrift store, they're very helpful, and we sell some of the stuff right out of the storage locker. They're helping move it around. Tyson Media has been really great to us because we didn't know what the heck we were doing. You're being yourself, and that very often is all it takes. Allison, who are the vets and the caregivers at the animal hospital that we see on the TV show? We've got seven doctors on payroll at the moment. Dr. Schwartz is a huge icon for the RAPS Animal Hospital. She's probably the most compassionate person you've ever met in your life. Dr. Marius does our complicated surgeries. He's our medical director. We have Dr. Rad, he's our orthopedic surgeon, and we've got Dr. Cruz, who's more so in tune with doing the general practice stuff. We've got Dr. Martinez that does the exotics, and we've got a couple other doctors, Dr. Homer and Dr. Ward, that have just joined us, so we're excited to have them. If you've got seven veterinarians on staff, you must see a large number of pets every day. They're not all employed on the same day. We usually have about one surgeon and two doctors on staff per day. For that, we have two managers. We have a team of about 10 veterinary assistants. We've got six technicians. We've got a huge hospital family here. On the television show, there's always a couple of good stories of helping pets, and I'm sure you have tons that you could tell us, but could you just share a couple of feel-good stories for us? How my time with Rabs, we had a cat come in who had been hit by a car. Now, this cat's face was unrecognizable. You probably wouldn't be able to comprehend what kind of animal you were looking at in the moment. Broken jaw, road rash, severe impact to the ocular area. And we wired his jaw shut, so he had to have a nasal tube put in. And this cat, through everything it went through, came out on the other end, finally had wires came out of its jaw, the nasal feeding tube came out, and he just didn't change temperament-wise. Like, he was just the sweetest boy. No matter what life threw at him, he did not pass that judgment onto us. And that was a story that I got to be a part of. It wasn't filmed, but it was amazing to see what this little guy went through. How do you think the television show and the RAPS clinic has inspired people? I think the only way for the animal hospital to be influential is to show the public how much we do care, how much we go the extra mile to accommodate. I think that has inspired people to want to be a part of the RAPS family with their own pets. You know what? The donations at the thrift store have gone up considerably. I've had people from all over North America send me stuff in the mail. I have had jewelry stamps. I've had money come from all over North America because they saw some pets and pickers. And our general quality of donations has gone up because now people know what we do. So from the thrift store point of view, pets and pickers is like the world's best advertising for doing the right thing. And you mentioned that you're getting letters from everywhere. Is that from all over North America? All over North America. Pets and Pickers released its first season down in the U.S. But yeah, I've had it all over from Florida right on up, all the way across Canada. Yeah, it's been really great. Karen, my wife and I watched the show the other night where your doggy Oliver was in for an exam. We have an American Eskimo as well, so that caught our attention right away. Our second. Oliver is my best buddy, but he's got the weirdest feet ever. We think his mother is also his sister. 
So we think that's why he has bad toes. But uh, everybody at the vet hospital, I'm sure Allison knows Oliver. I take him on picks with me. We tell everyone it's our second American Eskimo and our fourth vacuum. <laughs> totally. Actually, I'm really surprised Oliver's never gone to the hospital for eating something weird. Well, you're close anyway. <laughs> 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 and Karen, I have to ask you, you seem to know the value of everything that comes out of these uh, cartons at the snap of a finger. Where does that come from? When you're in the thrift shop, you get a good flavor for what things are worth. Marty and Amy are really the experts that know stuff more than I do. I know the day-to-day -day stuff like furniture, the stuff I see come through the thrift store. But if it's weird, I do fall back on that of experts. And what kind of feedback do you get from folks who come into the thrift store, not knowing the backstory, but then finding out what they're contributing to and how they're helping? I think the wonderful thing about pets and pickers is that we're educating people because up until then, people really did not understand how the thrift stores operated inside their community and inside the wrap system. Karen hit the nail on the head with that one. Educating is huge and some people may not know their pet symptoms could be very critical. So we've had a lot of people want to have their pets more examined, especially during, you know, the COVID stage where people were at home more and people are working from home more now and are paying more attention to the quirks and traits of their pets. And, oh, I saw that on TV. Maybe I should get that checked out on my pet. So I, I see a lot of people coming in with things that maybe that weren't so common before. Somebody sent me a letter because they saw Oliver on Pets and Pickers saying, I think I know what's wrong with your dog. I'll send you my dog's medical records. So there, people are paying attention. So the staff at the RAPS Animal Hospital must be a pretty tight-knit group. The staff at the hospital. We are very close. We see a lot of death. We see a lot of trauma. We see a lot of cuteness. We see a lot of sadness. And in that aspect, we really have to be there for each other mentally, physically. We need to be present for each other. A couple of weeks ago, I won't mention any names or even the type of animal, but one of our staff members took on an animal that was abandoned at our hospital. One night after work, she went to go outside and saw this animal there. She brought it in, took it home, nursed it. Thing was probably very young, needed to be bottle fed. Our caring staff member took this animal home, took care of it, was doing great. And one morning she woke up and this animal was, you know, pretty flat out, pretty lethargic, not eating. So she rushed her in and unfortunately the animal didn't make it. But there was a moment where I'm getting chills just talking about this. We have the caregiver that took on this animal trying to do CPR on this animal. And we have a team of five support people around her. We're hugging her back. We're rubbing her. We're telling her it's going to be okay. And we've got the doctors in there doing the best they can. And ultimately it, it didn't survive. But to see that moment of everybody just surrounding each other, supporting this one person in her time of need, like that's how we connect at RAPS. Not only do we care about the animals and the people outside of here, we really take care of our own. We really support each other. It's the best place I've ever worked, to be honest. Thanks to Allison Stanley and Karen Camachi from the Raps Animal Hospital and TV show Pets and Pickers for joining us on this edition of Today in BC. If you have suggestions or comments, send a voice message to podcast at blogpress.ca. You may be part of our podcast mailbag segment. You'll find Today in BC podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, iHeart, and Google Podcasts. <laughs>